What's going on guys? Um, I have a short one for you guys today. We do have our live stream tonight. Um, I don't know if the 151 product is going to get here on time. Uh, I used um, Diana's TikTok to actually order that stuff because she was getting unlimited coupons um, and there's still no confirmation that it's going to get in today. So we will figure something out. We'll open whatever we need to open up discussions for whatever we need to for the live stream. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so the topic for today is, you know, the seal product versus the alt arts in a PSA 10. Somebody left a comment the other day. Why not just chase the alt arts in a PSA 10? Um, and I'm going to break down in this video why, uh, that would necessarily not be the best strategy, but would still be a good strategy. And we'll talk about the pros and the cons of both of those. You might hear Aspen in the background. That's kind of normal here. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, Diana's uh, sisters over here, so they're all hanging out. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So in the thumbnail, I just used the booster box that's behind me, um, the Evolving Skies box, and then my Evolving Skies Rayquaza VMAX and a PSA 10, which I would consider, you know, one of the top chase cards uh, for Evolving Skies. Uh, there's about one really good chase card in pretty much every set uh, for the Sword and Shield sets. So I wouldn't say that there's like one or two sets that dominate all others. Every set pretty much has a good chase card in it that you can go after in a PSA 10 if you'd like. Um, I personally think there's a lot of value in going after PSA 9s that are modern uh, because most of the time the graded version is still gonna go for the same cost as raw in a PSA 9. So I feel like you're just getting that added protection uh, with shipping coming your way. Uh, I'm always nervous about buying modern alt arts you know, for $100 or over $100 or $80, $90 and then having them shipped over here. Even in a top loader, it bothers me a little bit that a card of that value would just be in a top loader. Um, so I like to buy graded, even if I were to crack graded cards, uh, but I think there's a lot of value in modern nines. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. So, and you can do this with any set, but let's, let's go ahead and, you know, we'll look at Evolving Skies, for example. Now, Rayquaza isn't the best example because in a PSA 10, uh, Rayquaza is still not worth more than the Evolving Skies box. But let's look at the top chase cards, which for a lot of these sets, the top chase cards get very close to the value of a sealed booster box. Um, so with Evolving Skies, you've got the Umbreon. Uh, in a PSA 10, that card is going for anywhere from $700 to $1,000. Uh, so it's closer, more on par with the box price uh, being four or $500. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, because there are all of these cards getting graded, all of these modern alt arts getting graded, and this it does, it doesn't mean that they're not going to go up in value, right? I'm not saying that they're not going to go up in value big time over the next five, ten years. What I am saying is that the sealed product is going to outpace these chase cards every single time. In my honest opinion, I believe that it's a no-brainer to buy sealed product. I'm not touting that you're going to have incredible gains, but when we're comparing to PSA 10 alt art chase cards you know, modern chase cards versus the modern sealed product, I think it's a no-brainer. I, I really don't think there's an argument there. I think most people would even agree with me uh, that, you know, modern sealed booster boxes are always going to be a better bet long-term than the chase cards themselves. Um, Umbreon is really a perfect example. Um, I'm going to do some other comparisons moving forward in this video. Um, I am going to try and keep it short because we do have the live stream later tonight. Uh, but Umbreon is a tough comparison because it is a very expensive card and there are like 10,000 of them in a PSA 10 or maybe 9,000 of them in a PSA 10 uh, in the registry on PSA that have been submitted, graded, and came back 10s. Now some of those cards, um, you know, Maybe didn't deserve tens, but they're, you know, maybe they're giving out more tens for modern cards, but regardless, the numbers are the numbers. So there's a ton of Umbreons that are in PSA 10. If there are nine or 10,000 of those already, then we already know that number is possibly going to go up even more. And then even right now, there are 10,000 options of where you can pick those up. With the sealed product, right now at four, five hundred dollars a booster box for Evolving Skies, that price is only going to go up, guys. It's not going to go down. The franchise is way too strong right now. They've marketed way too well. They've been raising their MSRP. They're getting cocky over there, Pokemon. Um, they're even releasing sets that look 
terrible in my opinion. I think the set that was just um, that's just talked about coming out uh, with the Raikou that looks like a giraffe. I mean, come on. When it gets to a point where we're seeing Pokemon defamated like this and we're seeing Raikou look like a giraffe, uh, a lot of people are unhappy about that. But I think. I think it's just, it's almost getting too easy for Pokemon. Uh, they know that these sets are going to sell well. They know that people are going to be into the hobby and be collecting stuff. Um, so, you know, anyways, moving forward, I think that the sealed product is always going to outpace the alternate arts. So if you've got all of those graded Umbreons and Rayquazas out there for Evolving Skies, and then you've got the box at 500, the Umbreon right now in a PSA 10 is worth more than the box. So one could say I'd rather just buy the Umbreon than buy the sealed product. Now, one point to that is that, you know, aesthetically, it's more fun to look at your graded collection and it takes up a lot less space. So that is, you know, the pros of going with these graded card chases instead of trying to accumulate a sealed collection, right? My closet is taken up by not even that many boxes, right? You really, you really have to factor in space and storage um, into this equation. It's unavoidable. You know, if you're in an apartment or a small home, you are limited on your space that you can actually store products in. If you have a big house, if you've got an empty garage, uh, great, you can store tons of product in there. You also have to worry about, you know, the storage conditions, um, you know, what the weather is like in your area, what the humidity is like, what the air quality is like, all these things. Uh, you know, once moisture gets into, you know, archive, you know, archival paper products, you know, that are kind of investments, uh, you know, you have some issues there. You know, you don't want to have a bunch of stuff stored. I've seen this plenty of times where collectors go back into their sealed collection that's been stored in the attic or in the basement or garage where it's not properly temp controlled, uh, where it's not in the best storage environment and that stuff gets absolutely ruined, whether it be by water getting in there or whether it be by just moisture over time or even things like rodents, mice, rats, what have you, um, possums, if it's possible for possums to get inside. Um, I know I definitely found a mouse or two in my garage and that definitely worried me with the stuff that I was storing in there, which is why since then I've decided to really trim down what I'm going to store and try and be a little bit uh, more proactive about protecting the stuff that I do have stored in there, buying plastic bins to try and protect all that sealed product. You know, one would argue, well, if it's sealed, the weather, you know, weather can't get into it anyways, but a lot of products nowadays have little perforation holes in them and that allows the air to exit the box, but it also allows air and moisture to enter the box as well. So you have to worry about this stuff. So, you know, having a slabbed collection and something like, this is my case Maddox, you know, a briefcase. These are great. A lot of people have these to store their slabs uh, properly. Uh, this is a great way to have, you know, your, your, your collectible investments and just go after those PSA 10. So you can store a lot of value in a very small space. So that's, you know, that's one of the major pros about, you know, storing stuff in there. Um, but if we're looking at box values, uh, I think Evolutions is a great example. Uh, one of the most valuable cards in Evolutions is the Charizard, and it's not even worth that much. I think, you know, mine's a PSA 8, I think it's worth $50. PSA 9 might be worth 100. PSA 10 might not even be worth the value of the box. Um, I might be wrong on that, but I think last time I checked, um, either a couple weeks or a couple months ago, uh, PSA 10 was actually costing less than the box. And this is where I'm going with this. Um, nobody wanted Evolutions. That box was everywhere. That box was super cheap. You could get them for $70, $80. And now it's a $700 plus box. There were some sales recorded around $900, 1000 But you guys get the idea. Um, same with Evolving Skies. Evolving Skies is maybe four or $500 now. Maybe you can even get one for $350 in auction. I don't know. Um, where is that Umbreon costs a lot more right now. Uh, but I do feel like in the long run, the box is going to outpace that Umbreon um, 10 times over. I really feel that way. Um, let's look at Fusion Strike. In Fusion Strike, and you have a lot of other great cards that are in Evolving Skies, but really we're going after, we're talking about the chase cards here in the PSA 10. Let's look at Fusion Strike. So today I was uh, 
taking a look at the Espeon VMAX, which is an absolute, it's a gorgeous card. Uh, you've also got the Gengar VMAX. Both in a PSA 10 really are not very expensive, uh, but definitely trump the value of the Fusion Strike booster box. Uh, whereas the Espeon is around 200 and the, the Gengar is around, I want to say 250, maybe 300, somewhere in that area for PSA 10. Maybe more than that. You know, it's been a little bit since I checked on the Gengar, um, but all that to say that, you know, people are very big fans of Gengar, but all that to say that the Fusion Strike box is cheaper than those. So one would say, well, I'll just get the PSA 10. You know, it's a higher value card. It's what everybody wants out of that box. It's the thing we're all after. So why don't we just cut to the chase and go straight to the card that we're all after instead of wasting our time trying to open products. But this isn't about opening products. This is about investment strategies and whether a long-term hold with that slab is gonna outpace the box. I don't think so. Um, I think more and more we're seeing all these options for alt arts and you know, that's, I've made videos on that. I think alt arts are at a really good time to buy. I think regardless of all the options you have on buying these, like alt arts are everywhere. There's no shortage of them. You can find them very easily. Uh, but the prices are fairly stable and I think they're about to be rising soon. Uh, so, so I think that the, the hobby health and the modern alt art um, market is very good right now. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorite things to look after. And I think once I complete a lot of my vintage, uh, collection goals, modern alt arts are something that I really want to hyper focus on, uh, because I think that there's a lot of opportunity there that people are, uh, just, uh, not seeing right now. Um, I think a lot of people are wary about modern alt arts, thinking the prices are going to come down even more. Maybe people feeling a little bit bearish about Pokemon in general, especially in the Scarlet Violet era. I know a lot of people are not happy with Scarlet Violet era. Let's just be frank. Um, I like the area. I, I, era. I think it's done pretty well, especially with 151. I can't repeat that enough. 151, 151. But anyways, guys, um, I think Fusion Strike right now at... You know, 120, 130 a box right now. Um, maybe even they're already at 140, 150. It's well below that PSA 10 price for that, for those chase alternate arts. But I think in the next year or two, you're going to start to see, you know, the alt arts, there, there's so many of those being graded right now. Like the numbers are there, but we have no idea how many booster boxes are out there. Every single day, people on YouTube, people that are streaming, people that are at home with their kids, people that are just getting into Pokemon, and they're like, okay, I see Scarlet and Violet, but I wanna look at this Sword and Shield because I missed out on this. They're gonna be opening all that product, especially if they're coming back to the hobby and they're not aware of the horrific pull rates uh, and the pull rate data for all these Sword and Shield sets. They're gonna jump right into it the same way I did, the same way many of you probably did when you first came back to the hobby um, and that means there's gonna be a ton of product getting open there are gonna be fusion strike boxes getting open back to back to back uh, the same can be said with chilling rain the same can be said I'm sure with darkness ablaze and vivid voltage and lost origin and even rebel clash and sword and shield base all of these sets are gradually going to continue to be open this is I can't stress this enough this isn't like a, a pump because I, in reality, I don't even have a lot of this product. Some of the product I don't even have, um, you know, such as, you know, Rebel Clash. I don't even have that booster box, but, um, and I don't even have a lot of boxes in general of each of these sets. I just, I believe in them and I, I wish if I had more money, if I had more capital and I wasn't so dead set on collecting vintage grails, then I would probably be going after modern and really trying to stockpile sealed collection. I do think it's going to be a no brainer move. Uh, even with the rates right now in your, in your banks, you know, you're, you're getting like four to 5% on average in a decent savings account. So it's like, why even mess with Pokemon? Why deal with the storage and selling and all that stuff? But if this is more of your lifestyle and you're going to be collecting for long term and you know, you've already been sitting on product and it doesn't bother you having your money sitting, you know, then go for it. I say, I think that it's more exciting and going to end up more fruitful than just having your money sitting in an account. At the same time, uh, it's work, it's effort. You know, if you don't wanna sell stuff, if you don't wanna package stuff, if you don't wanna deal with buyers and potentially getting scammed online, if all this stuff gives you anxiety and stresses you out, 
then just buy what you like. Uh, even more so, just buy the slabs. Just buy the cards that you like. They're much easier to liquidate. Uh, they'll be much cheaper to ship. Um, all around, easier to get that stuff off. Seal product really is a waiting game. It's a storage game. Um, and there's nothing sexy about it. I said this in the video before talking about investing in modern seal product. There's nothing sexy about it. It is a very boring game plan, but time and time again, history has repeated itself. And I think we're going to see the same gains that Sun and Moon has had, that Sword and Shield is starting to have. I think we're going to see those same gains with Scarlet Violet. You know, a lot of people are buying the PSA 10s, investing in PSA 10s. They say the prices are really good. I still say, even if you can get really good deals on PSA 10s, which I say go for it if you love that. If you're building your slab collection, go for it. But if you're strictly looking at investing, and we're talking about comparing these chase cards and the sealed product. Again, I don't think there's a comparison, but I think that this was a, a worthwhile video in making because I think a lot of people uh, have the misconception that having these PSA 10 cards is a better worthwhile investment than having the boxes themselves. If anything, buy these chase cards that you really, really want, but also buy the sealed boxes. You know, have a little bit of each, in my opinion. That's the same thing I'm trying to do here. I mainly binder and buy raw cards for all of my modern sets. Um, I did get some of my modern alts graded that I paid for and just wanted them protected. Um, but all in all, for me, my strategy, if you're going to say, Ryan, well, well, then what would you do? What would your ultimate strategy be for collecting modern and also going after these chase cards? For me, like I just said, it bothers me shipping cards out that are, you know, high value modern chase cards, you know, just raw. That bothers me a little bit. If you're in person and you can pick these cards up at your local shop or at trade nights, then great. But if you're ordering online, I say go for the PSA 9s. I say go for the PSA 9s because you know what? Grading is so subjective. We see so many people's different stories, you know, all across the board having different experiences with grading. I literally think that you can buy a PSA 9 graded modern alt art and then you can crack it, resubmit it, and probably get a 10. They are giving out 10s these days. I cannot stress that enough. I feel like a lot of people can slip under the radar with modern. And honestly, at the end of the day, you know exactly what you're getting into if it's already graded. Most of the time, right? Sometimes you have cards that are undergraded. But for the most part, uh, you can buy a lot of modern alt arts that are PSA 9 and they'll be really, really clean and they'll ship to you in, a, in their slab, protected. Um, and then you're not paying the ridiculous premium for a 10 and you're getting the price of a raw card, but it's already graded. So that's what I would do as far as the graded card. But then along with that, I would buy that nine as well as buying one of the box or two of the box. Or even if you're feeling a little bit crazy, buy a case of that set. Um, nothing feels better than buying a case of booster boxes. It just feels good in the hands. It feels heavy. You feel like you have your value in the weight. Um, but I do want to say, can't stress this enough, this is not about opening product. This is strictly just about you know the comparison of investing in these Chase Modern Alt Art cards versus buying the sealed product. The sealed product is eventually going to dwindle. Is it gonna be next year? No. Is it gonna be in five years? No. Is it gonna be in 10 years? Potentially. This is where we're gonna start seeing these boxes be a lot rarer and see that people don't have this stuff anymore. Now, geez, Orion, 10 years though, that's, you know, you're waiting a long time for this stuff. Yes, it's a speculative, speculative long-term investment. Um, you know, you can have some great gains on these PSA 10 cards, but the reality is that by 10 years from now, there could be 30,000, you know, of cards that are 10 now or 5,000 graded in a 10 now. There could be 20 or 30,000 or 40,000 of them graded in a 10, you know, 10 years down the line. We just don't know how many of those cards are out there. But I'd be willing to bet that there's way more of those cards out there than there are sealed booster boxes. And this is even with everybody and their mother hoarding sealed modern booster boxes, um, I still believe that they're in the long term going to trump any value uh, of the PSA 10 cards. Now, people always say, well, everybody's buying modern. Everybody's, you know, you know, I don't believe in either one of them working. You know, people think that modern sealed is a waste of time and that, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna deal with trying to be one of those guys that buys a bunch of modern seal product and thinks it's gonna work out. And 
I understand. I feel you. There's a lot of product out there. It's really hard to say whether this is going to be a good long-term investment or not. Do I believe it will be? Absolutely. Do I want people to all make decisions based on what I would do with my money if I was in a position coming into Pokemon and I wanted to buy product? No, I want people to make their own decisions, you know, do their own due diligence, but just hear me out on what I'm saying here. Um, so everybody thinks, I think everybody thinks everybody else is buying all these modern tents, buying modern seal product. I think either one of them can work out very well. You can buy modern tens and buy modern seal. And I think they're both going to work out nicely. Um, they both have their pros and cons. Um, but overall, I think modern sealed and buying the PSA nine is great. Um, I know this may seem redundant, but it's getting into the point here that everybody thinks that everybody is doing the same thing. I don't think that everybody is collecting and hoarding seal product. I think that people have been in the hobby for a long time are doing it. I think that they are buying a lot of seal product. Um, or, you know, those are the same people that are saying, no, I'm not going to waste my time with that. I have so much inventory of older sets. You know, there are people that have been around the block that have held product for a long time that I've personally heard from tell me, Orion, it's not worth it. It's not worth the hassle, how, how much storage space it takes up, how long you got to wait on it. You know, the market has to be just as strong in 10 years as it is now. You have a lot of risk factors here, a lot of variables here that really make it tough to make a decision on, you know, what's best for you, what's best for you financially. Um, but again, Pokemon is a luxury, and if you are doing this, you should know that it's a speculative investment, and that it, there's a lot of risk here. Um, I think in the long run, people that are sitting on sealed product that are willing to make that wait, they're willing to take that chance, they're gonna be handsomely rewarded, I do think, down the road. Um, and by this, I mean percentage-wise, right? Because at the end of the day, um, if, you, if you buy a box for $80, and you sell it for four or five hundred dollars in ten years, okay? In that 10, 10 year time horizon, you could put that money in an index fund and have it bake ten percent every single year and have it be very steady. Is it going to still have the kind of growth that Pokemon could have? Absolutely not, but it's a lot safer. Pokemon is not necessarily safe. I am not saying that it's a safe investment by any means. Do I think the franchise is going anywhere? No. Do I think it'll be strong in 10 years? Absolutely. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I would not be buying cards like this one right next to me. Um, if I didn't believe that, right? It, you know, I bought a PSA 10 Skyridge Zard. This is actually a perfect point too. Okay. Let's look at the PSA 10 Skyridge Zard. Um, the market on eBay from what the vault told me was $12,000 on that card. Okay. I paid $11,000 for that card. It's one of my ultimate chase cards. I love it. Um, but all value aside, the booster box itself, which these two things would have been very closely priced back in the day. A Sky Ridge Zard would have been very closely priced with a Sky Ridge booster box. But if we look at history repeating itself over and over again, we see that the Sky Ridge box is way outpaced the Sky Ridge Zard that is, mind you, a PSA 10, you know, perfect, even though even PSA 10s aren't perfect, whatever. Um, but this box is a $50,000 box. And some of you might say, oh, Ryan, come on, that's, I'm a veteran. No one's paying 50 grand for that box. That's a $30,000 box. That's a $40,000 box. That's a $28,000 box. Whatever. There, it's 50 grand on eBay right now. If somebody were to buy a box for that price point, to buy a Sky Ridge box for that kind of, for that kind of money, which I don't think a lot of people are, to be honest with you. But if somebody was, you know, maybe in the hype of COVID and everything, but if somebody was, they would be willing to pay five times the value of the perfect chase card in that set. And I mean, there are amazing cards in Sky Ridge. Uh, there are so many great cards, the Gyarados, the Umbreon, all of the regular hollows, uh, the other crystals. But I do think that the Charizard trumps all of them. So I consider that the chase card of Sky Ridge, uh, thus uh, reaffirming my point that these chase cards in PSA 10, and then there's, there's not a lot of these, right? There's 220, 230, you know, whatever of the Charizard and PSA 10. Do you know how many Sky Ridge boxes there are sealed? I can bank that there's probably maybe a hundred. 
maybe a hundred, maybe less than that. Who knows? Um, I don't know anybody that owns a Skyridge booster box. I don't know of anybody that owns a Skyridge booster box. You know, Pokey Rev, Cool Trainer Ryan, they probably own Skyridge booster boxes, but they're about, you know, and I know that they're, you know, YouTube and influences, but um, they're big names and they've been collecting for a long time. TCA Gaming might have a Skyridge booster box. Um, there are not a lot of people that I can think of that are going to have a Skyridge booster box. Uh, very few people. Um, it, you know, for all we know, you know, if you only knew, if we knew the exact number of Skyridge booster boxes, if there's 38 of them out there, it would be such a perfect example of even back then when they didn't print these sets to oblivion, um, there's only 200 and something of, of the Skyridge Zard and there's like a quarter of that in the number of sealed booster boxes. When I was at uh, Collecticon in Charlotte, somebody else may have seen one. I did not see a single Skyridge sealed booster box. If that box was gonna be anywhere, it would be at a massive convention in a big city like Charlotte. And it wasn't there. I did, however, see an Aquapolis booster box for 30K. Um, and I think there are probably more Aquapolis booster boxes than Skyridge. Uh, but again, uh, back to the point of all modern products and, and sealed products, they're super cheap right now, but they won't be that way in 10 years. They're not gonna be that way. People are gonna open up this product People every day are opening product. Um, and you know, it might not be all booster boxes. People are opening sleeve packs and other, you know, additional gimmicky products every day. But eventually it's all going to lead back to the staple, you know, iconic booster box. Everybody eventually is going to open those booster boxes to see what's inside. It's a part of the mystery, um, especially for people that have had the booster box for a long time. This is another great example. People who have sat on these booster boxes for a really long time, um, but they never bought the PSA 10 chase cards, you know, they are in those same group of people that might, you know, be contributing to these boxes being opened up where they're like, you know what? I don't want to spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a PSA 10, uh, S beyond VMAX from fusion strike or Gengar VMAX, but I bought this box when it was 80 bucks. So let's go ahead and just rip this box open, even though it's worth four or $500. Um, so there's also, you know, that part to it too, is that not only do you have the sealed investment, but you have the mystery and the allure of maybe something is in there. Um, even though that's a dangerous game, right? And you know, you should probably just to be safe right now with the pricing right now, just go ahead and buy modern PSA nines of your chase cards that you like. Um, there's so much hype, you know, in terms of having PSA 10, but who cares? It's all about what you like. You know, if you like, if you're fine with PSA 9s, which I am totally fine with PSA 9s, if I can find them with this Sky Ridge Zard, I had a really tough time finding a 9 that I really liked. So I just said, screw it. Z and G had an auction up and I bought a 10. But that is rarely gonna happen. And that was an impulsive decision that I made that I have zero regrets on. But I just wanna say, you know, if you can find a decent grade of the card and it's not perfect, but it makes you happy, especially with modern nowadays, all these modern nines are really, they have perfect backs. They have no whitening at all. All it is is off centering. Like if that's, if, if, if that bothers you, then okay, I understand. But for me, it doesn't really bother me that much. So buying PSA nine modern alt art chase cards that I love instead of investing in them, you know, buying those, you could even double up for the price of a PSA 10, you could buy two or three PSA 9s or two or three raw cards if you really don't like grading. I know there's people who don't like grading, but nobody's forcing you to keep it in the slab. You get it in the slab, it's protected in the mail, crack that son of a gun open, then boom, you got your raw card, you slip it in your binder, top loader, card save or whatever, uh, or regrade it, whatever. Uh, I think there's just way more opportunity with the PSA 9 market than there is for modern uh, in the PSA 10 market. This is not exactly the truth in the case with vintage. There's a lot of vintage cards that are 9s that really are 9s. And then there are some vintage 10s that just, they might not be perfect, but they are definitely the nicest out of the batch and they're very hard to find. Um, and vintage 10s, sometimes you don't have a choice when you're looking at those. The, the 10 is just the nicest card you're gonna get for the money. Um, believe me, guys, this was an impulsive move, 
buying this Crystal Zard, but it won't be the last card that I buy that's an expensive PSA 10 vintage card. There will be others, and I'm already looking at them. Um, but when it comes to modern, there's just so much supply out there. I would go with the 10s and just hold on to sealed product. Um, it does take up a lot of storage space, but the, the gains could be phenomenal and it could seriously outpace traditional investments. Um, now, in terms of you know what sets this is gonna work best with, in my opinion, we talked about this yesterday. We wanna think contrarian investing with this stuff. We do not want to buy into sets like Evolving Skies that are $500 already, unless we can find a really good deal on them. We wanna buy into the sets like Vivid Voltage, Astral Radiance, um, you know, and even maybe Fusion Strike and Chilling Rain if you can find deals on them, but those have moved a little bit. Um, and then if you've already crossed off your bases with uh, Sword and Shield, um, look into Scarlet and Violet. Yes, there's product out there everywhere and you could wait six months from now to buy products you know, so that way you can feel good about it because nobody wants to buy a booster box and then sit on it for six months and it doesn't do anything and then it starts to rise, right? There is timing to this, guys, but no one knows when that timing is gonna be perfect, okay? People have said, well, with modern, the best thing you can do strategy is to wait until boxes start moving and then jump into it. Yeah, but at that point, you've already lost some of that growth that's happened. You know, a lot of this stuff is very boring. Just set it, forget it. Buy the boxes while they're cheap and forget about it. Scarlet Violet is great for that because a lot of the Scarlet Violet boxes, Paldea has started moving, but even Paldea you can still find sub $100 probably. But a lot of these boxes are really good value right now. And in a couple of months, they, they might start to move a little bit at a time, but you don't wanna have to time that. That's a stressful thing to time that. This is why every set, I try and buy a box or buy a case of, and that way I can set it, forget it. If prices dip a little bit below, so be it. Um, but we don't know if that's gonna happen. You know, we could always, always, history repeats itself, and we could always have a, a, a dynamic where a set comes out, there's a lot of hype around it, uh, people really like it, but then it hypes up even more. People love it. People are going crazy over it. This is what happened with Evolving Skies, and it should have never gone to the price that it did so quickly, uh, but it did. It went from being 150, oh, you're paying too much, 150 is way too much for that box, to being, okay, it's now, you know, three to $500, and that's too much. But it's it's all relative, right? If in a couple of months, Evolving Skies is 700 a box, 500, 400, 300 might not look so cheap, um, might not look so expensive. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of really good deals with Scarlet Violet right now. And uh, people gotta take advantage of that and just sit on it. It's not gonna be um, an instant overnight play, but it, I think in the long run, it's going to work out very well. Um, I think that's concluded it. This ended up being way longer than I wanted it to be. Um, I just can't stress enough how I think a lot of people think that buying a PSA 10 uh, is the end all be all of modern investing and I don't think that that's the right strategy to go into it. And I also wanna show you something. Uh, this was a card that I bought raw um, and it tend, but it shouldn't have tend. If you look at the centering here, the centering is not ideal. I mean, it might look okay to you guys, but to me, I can tell that the centering is off and that this card maybe shouldn't have gotten a 10. We're, you, there are a lot of 10s like that, and I think that there's a lot of risk in buying modern 10s for that reason. So I think a great piece of advice is to buy raw and grade yourself, but even better, and, and in my opinion, is just to buy the PSA 9. And you can take a gamble again with a 9, and just or just get really good value with the 9 and invest in the sealed product, uh, which will be boring, but in the long run, will outpace the PSA 10 prices. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys. I hope it was informative. I hope it wasn't too redundant. Um, I'll see you guys later for the live tonight. Uh, if we don't get our 151, we'll find something else to open. Maybe we'll try our luck with these heavy hitters boxes again, since I've got 20 plus of them in the garage still. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, I've been looking at Espeon VMAX today a lot and the Dragonite and I'm just like, I am itching to get some really gnarly pulls out of some of the packs that are in these heavy hitters boxes. Um, God, Sword and Shield is brutal with pull rates, but man, it would be so cool to get some of those alt arts. Uh, we did get the Leafy on V the last live, so that was awesome. Hopefully something can happen like that again. Anyways, 
Peace out, guys.